Sea turtles have inhabited the world's oceans since prehistoric times. Of the seven species worldwide, three are common locally, and most of them are endangered as a result of hunting and degradation of their habitats. Today, Trinidad and Tobago is in the forefront of conservation efforts for the giant leatherback turtles that nest on our shores. But less attention has been paid to the hawksbill and green turtles that live here year-round, and they continue to be a target in the open hunting season, despite the fact that they are just as critically endangered as the leatherback. Recognizing that it was time to take local sea turtle conservation efforts beyond the nesting beaches, Turtle Village Trust, through its partner SOS Tobago, and with the support of the Atlantic LNG Company of Trinidad and Tobago, embarked on a six-month pilot project to study the hawksbills and greens that reside on the reefs and seagrass beds around Tobago. Years of concentrated effort on key leatherback nesting beaches around Trinidad and Tobago has had a tremendous impact on the leatherback numbers and public awareness of their plight. Poaching and harassment of these gentle giants still occurs occasionally, but is increasingly condemned. Their main beaches in Trinidad are legally designated protected areas during the nesting season. Dedicated community groups maintain ongoing research and protection efforts with the support of government agencies. And all of this has also spawned a vibrant ecotourism industry around the nesting season of the giant leatherback. The greatest local threat to these magnificent creatures is now offshore, and groups like Nature Seekers and the Grand River Nature Tour Guide Association are at the forefront of research efforts to explore turtle-friendly fishing techniques. As a result of all this focus on the leatherback, many people assume that all is well for the hawksbills and greens that are still enthusiastically hunted at sea in the open season. Sadly, this is just not the case. Hawksbills are named for their pointy, bird-like beak, which allows them to feed on the sponges and corals of their reef habitat. They have been targeted for centuries for their beautiful brown and yellow shell. Green turtles have a pretty, blunt face and a dark olive shell. As adults, they feed almost exclusively on seagrass and algae and follow set migration routes from their feeding grounds to their nesting sites. Since colonial times, green turtles have been extensively hunted throughout the region for their meat. This high demand inevitably led to a decline in numbers, and today, greens and hawksbills are endangered and internationally protected by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Additionally, signatory countries have their own domestic legislation regarding the protection of endangered species. While turtles are legally protected on our beaches, Trinidad and Tobago is one of the few countries in the Caribbean that still maintains an open hunting season for sea turtles at sea. As a result, countless green and hawksbill turtles are caught, killed and sold to wild meat enthusiasts throughout the country every year. It is possible that overhunting has already driven the population of greens in Tobago past the tipping point, as nesting reports become increasingly rare. But even if greater attention was paid to identifying and protecting their nesting sites, the real battle for the future of these turtles is at sea. Greens and hawksbills have been studied extensively in places as near as Barbados and as distant as Florida. So while little was known about our own offshore population, there was lots of information out there about how to go about finding out more.
Funding from Atlantic made it possible for Turtle Village Trust and SOS Tobago to put together an expert research team that worked alongside local divers that visited a number of popular reef sites around Tobago. We recorded details of every encounter we had with sea turtles. And when possible, the turtles would be brought onto the boat for a closer study. On board, research interns weighed, measured, and tagged the turtle on both front flippers, took a tissue sample, and then released the turtle back into the sea, all in keeping with standard tag and release methods. Tagging allows us to identify individual turtles, so we can monitor how fast they grow, how far they travel, and may help us estimate just how many turtles live on our reefs. Tissue samples are submitted for DNA analysis to provide information including identifying nesting beaches of origin. We also explored several seagrass beds in southwest Tobago, which are known to be traditional sites for setting turtle nets. In these shallow, often cloudy waters, we looked for turtles at the surface when they come up to breathe. We chose to use kayaks to patrol the survey area, as the turtles were easily scared off by the sound of a boat engine. By repeating our survey at each site and counting how many turtles we encountered, we were able to compare the density of the turtles at each site. Overall, about 140 green turtles were counted at our seagrass sites, but only two were of adult size. This groundbreaking pilot project has laid the groundwork for detecting seasonal and long-term changes in the abundance of turtles on our reefs and seagrass beds. Certain study sites quickly proved to be of particular significance in terms of turtle activity, and this will inform the development of a long-term monitoring and conservation strategy for these areas. Green and hawksbill turtles range freely throughout the Caribbean Sea. They are true regional citizens, and their survival depends on our ability to react and respond to their plight. Every turtle counts, and every country counts, whether by providing safe waters for foraging, or safe beaches for nesting, or both. Trinidad and Tobago's legislation regulating marine turtles captured offshore is complicated to enforce. The local laws conflict with the international treaties and agreements. 
Within the context of the open and closed seasons, it is impossible to discuss legal quotas and sustainable takes for any species, as there is no record of the numbers caught in each season. There is even less information about what was there in the first place. This is a severe limitation to further study, and an even more severe threat to the survival of the species. Closing the open season even temporarily would give these creatures much needed time to recover and give researchers an opportunity to definitely ascertain the existing populations. A moratorium on turtle hunting in the Grenadines has led to a dramatic surge in numbers of greens over the years in the Tobago Keys. This has had obvious benefits not just for the species and the habitat, but also for tourists and the general public who have the pleasure of swimming with these ancient creatures. Imagine the impact that such a population surge could have on the nylon pool, adding value to the tourism product and helping to restore the ecological balance of an area that has been plagued recently by an overgrowth of seagrass, green turtle's favourite food. The possibilities for recovery are endless and exciting, but long-term funding and support for offshore sea turtle research is critical. These efforts must have the commitment of government and corporate agencies to fund the work and to design and implement policy based on the research findings. It is estimated that sea turtles spend only 1% of their life on the beach, nesting and hatching. Once hatchlings enter the ocean, they are on their own. As the conservation efforts on the nesting beaches continue to grow, it is important to extend legislation to protect turtles year-round and to expand research programs to the offshore habitats where they spend 99% of their life. After centuries of overhunting and mindless consumption, the survival of our hawksbill and green turtles rests firmly in our hands. Our commitment to their recovery must be motivated not just by the recognition of their potential contribution to our tourist economy, but also by a deep appreciation of the unique role they play in the fragile web of life that sustains us all.